What parts of God's attributes and character can be absorbed by the human soul? Well, that is a question I can't answer, actually, because I don't know yet all the parts of God's attributes and qualities, firstly, and secondly, I don't know which ones of them the human soul is able to absorb either. And thirdly, I don't know what mechanisms have been created to allow those flows of, of energy types of energy to the human soul. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So that there's three issues with answering your question. You've got to know all of those three things before you can answer the question. Mm -hmm. So, But we can again, we can assume a number of things given God's infinite nature. Given God's infinite nature, there, mu there might be infinite, an infinite number of parts and that, of attributes that we can receive from God. Does that make sense? Yeah. And in fact, when you do receive God's love, you also receive a number of things that God um, has. An example of that is uh, in the spirit body form, when this soul has received enough of God's love to tran trans um, to, to transfer between the seventh and the eighth dimensions, in other words, the soul becomes at one with God, the spirit body of that soul is now able to move through the physical universe unbound uh, from the spheres that it currently is in down, unbound by time and unbound by space. So that means that you can have a desire from that moment on, you have a desire to be somewhere and you're there. There's no sense of travelling there. But before that time, that doesn't exist. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that means that every form of travel before the eighth sphere, there was always a, like, you, you're always conscious of time going past as you're travelling. But after the 8th sphere transition, 7th to 8th, you have the instant desire to be at some place and you're there. Of course you've got to know where that place is before you can go there, but when you have an instant desire to be there, you're there. It's just quite simple. Mm. So you're now not bound by space. You now can instantly traverse space, but only within the spheres of development. Do you follow? Yep. But when you're in the 36th, 35th sphere, just before the 36th, you have the ability to, of course, do this between any other sphere and the sphere you're in. Does that make sense? Mm. Now, these abilities were not with you before you made the transition from the 7th to the 8th. So that's an indication that not only did you receive God's love, but you must have received something else God had too as a part of receiving that love, do you see? Yeah. And, and that thing is this, um, well, the spirits have all sorts of ways of describing it, but basically you call, could call it instantaneous travel, couldn't you? Yeah. Within the bounds of your development. Now that's an example of you having received something else from God mm. that wasn't there before as a part of receiving God's love, mm. right? So the reality is as you receive God's love, you also receive other attributes of God that love has a part of. And, uh, and this is an interesting fact that we finish up receiving a lot of different kinds of things from God, different abilities that we did not have before. Another example of it is uh, when you make the 7th to 8th sphere transition, you, you also receive the ability to process information much more rapidly. Right? Because you're now connected to the way God processes information. So now you're still limited by the 8th sphere condition and obviously this continually increases thereafter. But you can now, ha you can now um, understand things much more rapidly than you can before. Before there had to be a part of your intellectual process of your spirit body involved in the assimilation of information. After the 8th sphere... Only your soul-based intellectual process now gets used in processing information. And this is an emotionally-based process that is much more rapid. And in fact, as you can see, emotions can actually leave your soul and go outside of the universe, in fact. 
So that's the way God's designed emotion. And so, so this gives you the ability now to actually communicate even with God. Once you use emotions, that's how you communicate with God, obviously. And you're communicating with something outside of, your, outside of the known universes at the time. So, so you start utilising this particular feature of your soul and you didn't use it before. You were limited a lot by your physical mind instead. So there's, a, there, there's obviously many things we already know we have received. But what I'm suggesting to you... Oh, I'm running out of voice now. What I'm suggesting to you is that I don't know the answer to your question because I don't know all of God's attributes and character that I can receive. Yep. And I don't know the mechanisms by, via which reception is possible. Mm. Make sense? Yep. Yep. 